Hey creative, what's up? It's your girl Jamila and welcome back to my laboratory. Y'all, I'm so excited for today's video because your girl is on a journey to learn how to digitize more of my own designs versus outsourcing. So I recently just took a digitizing class hosted by Recoma on their Chroma digitizing software. So I just wanted to kind of create this video, show you guys a few things that I learned, help you along the way. And of course, everything I use or everything you need will be listed in the description box below. And if you like this video, you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, make sure that bell notification is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming craft tutorials. All right, guys, so for this video, we're going to go ahead and start off and I'm using Chroma Inspire. OK, it's the most basic level of Chroma and it comes with your machine automatically. OK. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit create a new design. And what I'm going to do is go over here to my left toolbar and hit the text tool. So I select the text tool and then I just select anywhere on the screen for the text to come up. Okay. And so over here in your left panel is actually how you're going to go ahead and edit the text. Now, so I know I, I want all caps, so I'm going to put my caps on. And I want to leave a space because I'm going to bring in a different design for that. Um, for that, right? So it's M. Wait. Okay. And now I'm just going to go over here and pick a font that I want. So one thing that I did learn while taking my digitizing class is that if you hover, hover over the fonts, it is show like this little, um, this little window will pop up and it'll show you all the available characters and it'll tell you the recommended height for each letter, right? So for impact, they say the best the um, biggest you can go is about 1.18 inches so that's just something you know something to note when you're um, picking your font but I know I want to do the Princeton font because I want that satin border around and the biggest I can go with this font is 2.76 okay so we have that so let me just move that over a little bit. So now that we have our font, let's go first. I want to make sure that I'm keeping this in my hoop. So the, since this design is going on a hoodie, of course, I want it to be kind of big. So I'm going to go up here where it says hoop and I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to select the 12.2 by 8.3 inch hoop. And hit OK. So this is what my design would look like in the hoop. Too small. Right? So I'm going to go over here to height. And let me see. Two. Uh, three, hmm. I think I can make everything about 2.5. And uh, get away with it still being in the hoop. Because I also have to remember I'm bringing the design in right here. So then I'll just go ahead and hit apply. And we'll just scoot it over. Probably even do it a little bit bigger. Okay, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I mean, well, the biggest I can go is 2.76. So let's see how that works out. All right, might as well just hit the max size. Okay. And I also probably don't even need that big of a space. So I just backspace that a little bit right there. Okay, so now that I have this, so this is gonna give me, so we'll go ahead and click um, this square right here and it's gonna give us the realistic look. So I, I want that satin border, right? But I also want like a, a fill stitch on the inside. So in order to do that, let's take off the realistic view. We're going to go over here and grab our, uh, 
Wait, where is it? Y'all bear with me because I'm still, I'm still, you know, getting hang it. Here it is. Okay. So it's these three dots down here and I'm going to um, select complex fill. And let me just zoom in. I'm going to use this magnifying to zoom in. And then I use this hand to move around. Uh, I could probably zoom out. So right is to zoom in and left is to zoom out like if you're using your mouse. Okay. So what I'm going to do, make sure I go back and get my complex fill stitch. I'm just going to make points like hey, how you can see on the inside of this design, those little lines right there. I'm just going to make my points. I'm just going to kind of follow those lines as a guideline because I want my fill to be inside hidden inside of the satin stitch to kind of hide any imperfections and i hope that makes sense to you guys so i'm just going to do that for all the letters and just a reminder that i am super new to digitizing myself but i know that others you know okay so hold on let me let me pause that so whenever you're done with your points, the you need to connect to the first point that you did. Okay. Okay. So once we have that, we're going to select, go over here to your left um, panel and hit your select tool. Okay. And now you see that we have this M and it's not perfect, but that's fine because it's going to be hidden inside the M and we're just going to right click it and order hit order and we're going to send this to the back and I actually want to change this color so then bring it back to the front to make sure that's the one I'm working with and do, 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 do. Hey creative, sorry to interrupt your video and I really hope that you're enjoying it, but I just want to tell you about Deco Summit. It's a three-day conference hosted by Racoma in Miami. This year it will be in September. You can use my code for a discount on your tickets, but you can come and be a part of live classes and hands-on training with just a small group of people, okay? If there's any time for you to go ahead and invest in yourself in a business, Deco Summit is definitely it. Like I said, use my code for a discount. Don't wait to get your tickets because this is definitely an event you don't want to miss. Let's make it black. Okay, so I didn't want to make everything black, but this is what I can do. Select this the stitch that we just did go over here to our box and under commands under commands you see right here where it says color so it's coordinating with this box down here right so i want it to be i guess for the purpose of this video let's just make it let's do number five okay so i was able to just change this and set up everything so we have that now order and send it to the back and hit realistic view so we can get an idea of what it's gonna look like and look at that is that not bomb is that not bomb okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and basically repeat that process for all of these letters let's turn off the realistic view so we go down here to our three dots and hit complex fill and i'm just gonna follow this little guideline and i'm not making it perfect because like i said it's gonna be hidden inside of um the satin border so it doesn't really have to be perfect and go to commands change that color and send it to the back Let 
Okay, and so this is what we have so far, which looks great. Let's go ahead to the realistic view and check it out. Yes, that's exactly how I want it to look. And now what I'm going to do is go over here to File. And I'm going to hit Merge because I purchased a design off Etsy that I just want to kind of fit in here. So let me just put that right there for now. And I need to go select this. No. Go back to text and I'm going to select the text because I do need that double space that I had earlier. Okay. Now back to my select tool. Then I can just kind of... Oh, let's go back because I missed a piece. Still missed that piece. Just take all that and move it out the way so I can get this grizzly bear. Okay, we'll put him right there. Now go ahead and grab this and move it up there. Then I'll grab my letters and just kind of position everything back. Let's turn off this realistic view. Now I'm thinking again, I don't need... Oh, let me see if I scoot it back. Yeah, I do. Okay, so yes, I do need that space right there. Okay, and so now I can go ahead and select everything. And just to make sure it's aligned when you select everything. And I'm just going to align everything to the bottom. Well, let me go back. It looks like I need to group this grizzly bear together. So I'm select it all and just hit group. That's just going to kind of keep all the stitches and stuff together. And I'm just going to go ahead and align everything to the bottom. So I know that, you know, everything is level or whatnot. And turn our realistic view on. And what I can do is go over here and if you know I could go ahead and change the color of this um of the bear let me ungroup it first so if you want to make any changes or anything you have to ungroup it or it's going to select everything okay so I just want that let's go to commands change that color to one Um, let me see, what color can this be? Hmm, let's change it to 19, which is white. And change this red to black. Change the blue to white change the eyes from green and I guess we'll just do white for that as well 
Yeah, I think that's good. And actually, all of this yellow, I don't want it to be yellow. I really want it to be... When I stitch it out, it's actually going to be black. You know, it's going to be like a fill stitch. Um, the same... So I'll just change it to white. But I just wanted to do it in yellow so you guys could really see. But when I actually stitch it out... This is the color, like this is the color design I want because I'm going to go ahead and put it on a red background. And when you design something, if you want to see what it looks like on that color background, you can go right here um, to this like TV or monitor screen. And let's see, because this is, like I said, it's going on red. So this is what it, your design will look like on a red shirt or whatever color shirt that, you know, yellow or you know whatever so let's just take it back to white and then of course we can go ahead and uh, do the 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 uh, slow draw to see how it would stitch out and I'm just gonna drag this line out so it's gonna do my fill stitch first then the satin stitch. Then it's going to do the white part of the grizzly, the back black part. And that looks great. I'm super happy with how that came out. So now what we're going to do is go to, um, let's go to print, print preview. And so this is, you know, the sheet that prints out. Um, so you can get a good idea of, you know, placement or whatever, how you want to push it on your garment. And the next page to print out is actually going to be the production worksheet, which is basically what we just watched when we did the slow draw, right? And it's, you know, going to give you the order that it's going to stitch out so that you can put the colors in on your, um, printer. So... We could just go ahead and close that and then you can print that if you wanted to. But before you did that, you would want to save this. You would name it and you want to save it as a Chroma RDE. And that way, um, if you, cause of course you need to do a test stitch out, right? So you would save it as a Chroma RDE. And then if you did the test stitch out and it, you know, you needed to come back and make some changes, you would make the changes in that RDE file. And of course, so after you do that, then you would go ahead and um, save it again and you would change the type to um, the DST file. Right, and I already have it right here. Um, I've, I've already saved it and this the DST file is actually what's going to go into the embroidery machine and what your machine will read so that is it as far as the digitizing part I'll come back again with another video and we'll actually go ahead and stitch this out um, I hope this video is super helpful for you guys I really hope that you learned something let me know if you want to see some more chroma digitizing tutorials let me know if you're going to be working in Chroma or if you had trouble in Chroma. Or, you know, just don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Share with your friends. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.